You may all be seated in God's wonderful presence. Amen. So today we are looking at, let's talk Jesus. His second coming. Let's talk Jesus. He's, he's coming again. Let's use the word, he's coming again. Like we saw yesterday when we saw people from various nations, various languages, various tribes, everyone singing in their own different language. Some we understood, some we could not understand, depending on where you come from. And yet, together in unity of worship, we lifted up the name of the Most High God. It's just a little taste of what heaven will be like. Heaven will be a place of great rejoicing, a place of great celebration, a place where different tongues, where people from different nations will gather together. And there will be no discrimination. There will be no artificial barriers between us because together as children of the Most High God, we will come together. One object of worship will be God himself. And if you turn your Bible to Revelation chapter 7, Revelation chapter 7, the Bible says in verse 9, John the Beloved, in Revelation 7 verse 9, John the Beloved said, because God gave him a vision, he saw what the end times would be like. And God, you know, showed him various scenes of what the end would be like and what some of what heaven will be like. And he said, I saw and there was a great multitude, no man could number them, of all nations, of all kindreds, and all people, and tongues. And they stood before the lamp, before the throne, and before the lamp of God, and they were clothed with white robes. White robes mean they were clothed with righteousness. They were clothed with holiness. They were clothed with the glory of God. A great multitude. So when the Bible says to us that there is a highway of righteousness and no unholy thing will be found there in Isaiah, it's telling us about the highway to heaven. For those who are going to heaven, it's a highway of holiness. The Bible says nothing unclean, nothing unholy will be there. So if we are living our life here and we are living it casually, as if, you know what, pastor cannot see me, members of the church, or well, maybe some members of the church cannot see me, you might have members of the church who are in the same group like you, doing sinful things. You really don't mind showing your true color there. But God says that the righteous, only the righteous will be found in that highway of holiness. Be not deceived. God cannot be mocked. And God sees everything. He may not say anything. He's watching because... It's like the Thanksgiving turkey. You know, the Thanksgiving turkey is trotting around from January till October, till the first week of November, till the second week of November. But hey, by the third week of November, every turkey ends up on the Thanksgiving table. So it's the same. The fact that the owner of the turkey has not done anything to the turkey does not mean that the turkey is not reserved for its day of, its day of um, paying back for all the food it has eaten. There's a day of payback for all the sins that have been committed. But I know that you are not one of those. Yours is a day of rejoicing in heaven. John said, I saw them. They were too many to be counted. And that's why it's therefore critical that we understand that every human being, regardless, is a child, is a creature of God. And we cannot discriminate based on culture, based on race, based on language, because before God, we are all the same. And when you see people who discriminate based on race or, or culture or, um, or, or, or language, you know they are ignorant. Because if you really know God, you know you dare not relegate anybody to an inferior level simply because of their race or their language. And God loves us all. God wants us all. He created us all and he cares for us all. In Psalm 2 verse 8, he says, ask of me 
And I will give you the heathen for your inheritance and the utmost parts of the earth for your possession. So as Christians, as children of God, God wants us to ask us for the souls of men to the ends of the world. Every nation in the world is our constituency for witnessing. So you cannot say I will witness to only the uh, black race, or I will witness to only the white race, or I will witness to only the um, Asian race. God says to the utmost parts of the world, because God loves everyone. His power is for and available to us all, regardless of color of race and tongue. If you turn to Acts chapter 2, when the Holy Ghost fell upon the disciples in the upper room, when the Holy Ghost came upon them in the upper room, the Bible says that when they were, and you remember that they were Jews, the people in the upper room were all Jews. Because that was the first, that was where the church first started. In Acts chapter 2 and verse 5 to 6, but when the Holy Ghost came upon them, something interesting happened. We are told that they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. That's verse 4. Acts chapter 2, verse 4. And they began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now I want you to listen carefully. Verse 5. And there was at Jerusalem Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. People were in, in Jerusalem at that time from all the nations of the earth. And listen to what happened. When the noise was noised about, the multitude came together and they were confounded because every man heard them speak in his own language. Remember it says they came from all the nations of the world. And yes, on that day of Pentecost, only 12 people were speaking, a la were speaking languages that everybody from all over the world who were gathered understood. That tells you that God is interested in every nation of the world. Regardless of what the nation may be. Maybe they are, uh, the, 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 it's the Asian um, um, nations where it's mostly um, Hinduism, Buddhism, um, um, Islamic. Name it. God is interested in them. God wants them, their souls to be saved. And on the day of Pentecost, the very first opportunity to give witness of Jesus, every nation understood the gospel of Jesus because as the, as the, supernatural, um, as the supernatural utterances were being given to the disciples and they began to speak out, everybody heard. That in itself is a miracle. Remember, there were only 12 of them. How come 12 people were speaking 12 different languages and everybody in the world understood? If you even listen to what we were singing yesterday in uh, Walnut, I know even from where I come from in the south, uh, southwestern part of Nigeria, if uh, Pastor Ogumola begins to speak his language, I might not understand. If Pastor Ojo speaks his language, I might not understand. If, um, so even in that little uh, area, there are hundreds of languages. So imagine what happened on the day of Pentecost. Twelve people were speaking and everybody understood. That tells you that something supernatural happened on that day. And something supernatural can happen today as well. Because if we allow God to use us, it means that God will use us to minister to every nation on the face of the earth. And there will be something that we are giving to every one of them that they will be able to receive from us. I'm praying that Living Spring will get there. Already God has helped us. Um, because when the, Kenyan, when the Kenyans were there yesterday and they started talking about Kenya, I said, I've been to your country. In fact, I said, Living Spring has done mission work in your country. In fact, the, where Living Spring went in your country is north in Trukana, where some of them had never even been. And over there, we have been a blessing. And we can go on and on and on about the many nations that God has used us to be a blessing to. And we will continue to be a blessing. Every one of us is God's work in progress. We are God's work in progress. So when we are looking for perfect people, um, when somebody walks into the church and we say, ah, this one is a sinner, this one is not good enough, this one, um, maybe he has tattoo, maybe that one, uh, uh, the color of their hair is like 10 different colors, you know. 
We are all work in progress. Tell your neighbor we are work in progress. Tell the next one that you are God's work in progress. We are God's work in progress. He's taking us from bad because some of us know where we were before we gave our life to Jesus. How many people here were perfect before they met Jesus? Uh-huh. Some of us were very, very bad. And I can begin to point out some bad ones right now. Should I? We are God's work in progress from bad to forgiven. He forgave us. From worthless. Some of us, nobody wanted to have anything to do with us. People looked at us and said, what will they become? What is... Some, there are some of us that our teachers told us we will never amount to anything good. Do you remember those kind of teachers in school? Because you are a troublemaker, they say you. You are not going anywhere. And look at you today. Do you look like somebody who is not going anywhere anymore? From worthless to the song that we just sang, where the precious Jesus says that we are precious to him. In fact, there is a scripture where he says that you are my special treasure. You are God's special treasure. From worthless to God's treasure. And when we look at Ephesians 5, Ephesians 5, because as I said, none of us is perfect, but we are God's work in progress. The Bible says in Ephesians 5, uh, verse 20, 25b, it says, Christ loved the church. The church is you and I. He gave himself for us to sanctify us, to wash us by the wa washing with water, through his word, and then he brings us to himself as a glorious church, without stain or wrinkle, in, in essence, without sin. He takes us from our sinful ways. He washes us. He makes us clean. He makes us beautiful. And then he brings us to himself. And nobody can point a finger to us and say, look at you, you useless sinner, because God has cleansed us. And he says, without stain, without wrinkle, or any blemish. He himself makes us holy and blameless. So if you are there, you are blaming yourself. I did this, I did. God is no longer blaming you. God has already washed you. God has already cleansed you by his own self. God has already made you holy, made you blameless. Why are you allowing the devil to continue to condemn you? And why is God doing all of this? Because there's a hope for us in heaven. We have a home forever with the Lord. He says, I will go. He said, and I will go and prepare a place for you. He said, and I will come back for you. And then you will come with me so that where I am, you will be also. Jesus is in heaven. He's also here with us. But home for him is heaven. And he says he will come and take us. That's why we should not be afraid. When it's time for us to go, we are not going alone. Amen? Amen? You are not going alone. At that moment when you are closing your eyes, Jesus is right there with you and holding your hand. So you are not even walking alone. He says, hey, I'm here. We are going home. I've told you the story many times. I, I had been here for a few years. And then I had to go to Nigeria. And... My mom was at a function there. She was at a, an uncle of mine had passed. And they were having the, um, you know, the, the funeral ceremony. So as the car stopped in our, it used to be a village, now it's a big city. Yes. Who so said, hmm. <laughs> Do you have a university in your own village? <laughs> in my village, it's now a city. Yeah. It has a university. It has, um, it has a golf course. Yeah. People flying from all over the world. Do they fly in from all over the world to your village? <laughs> so as I stepped out of the car, I just saw my mom coming. And she began to dance. And I began to dance. And we began to dance towards each other. And then we embraced each other. I was home. That is how our home going will be. You will be dancing. Jesus will be dancing. And then you, he will meet you. And he will say, welcome child. Welcome home. He says, I'm coming to take you home. Heaven is beautiful. It's our eternal home. 
If you are tired of Philadelphia and the, you are not, you, are, you don't, you are, you are afraid. If I go out, will I come back? There's no such thing like that in heaven. There is no crazy person running the red light. The last time, one day I was driving in the night back here on um, 30 on Market Street. I'm like, what is going on in this place? People were driving like they were out of their, you know. Hey, I'm like, I was so scared. But there's no such thing like that in heaven. There's no filth in heaven. We are told that the, the streets of heaven are made with gold. And it's not the kind of cheap gold that you buy um, at, um, at Kmart or Macy's. It's, it's, it's gold. It's real gold. It's the kind of gold the Bible says that it looks like glass. It reflects you. The streets are made of gold. It's a beautiful eternal home. Again, John the beloved that Jesus granted revelations, he said, I saw a new heaven and a new earth. The first heaven and earth. This, he this earth will pass away. And then there will be a new heaven. And the sea was no more. He said, I saw the holy city. The new Jerusalem. It was coming down out of heaven from God. It was prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. It's going to be beautiful. It's, John said, I saw it coming down. God had prepared it a beautiful heaven. And it's for us. Say it's for me. So don't sleep. Don't slumber. I want every one of us to be prepared. I don't want any of us to be casual with our Christianity. Don't say, ah, maybe it will be another hundred years before Jesus comes. If he comes today, what are you going to do? So we have to be prepared. He said, as were the days of Noah, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. Matthew 24, 36, 44. He says, as in the days, as in those days, I'm now in verse 38, before the flood, they were eating, they were drinking, they were marrying, they were giving in marriage until the day Noah entered into the ark and they were unaware until the flood came and took away all. So also will be the coming of the Lord Jesus. He said two people will be in the field. One person will be taken and the other left behind. Two women will be grinding at the mill. We don't grind mills anymore, but maybe two women will be in the, in the mall shopping and one will go. And the other will still be shopping. Or two of us will be sitting together in church. And one will be gone. And you will look at this. And you are still sitting here. Not you. No, I'm not talking about the people who are here in church. I'm talking about the, some, somebody else. Glorious change is coming. Something beautiful is going to happen. 1 Corinthians 15 verse 51 to 52, he said, listen, let me tell you a mystery. It's difficult for us to believe. He said, not all of us will die. He said, some of us will be changed because when Jesus comes, there will, be, there will still be some people who are alive. He said, and in an instant, in the twinkling of an eye, the trumpet will sound and the dead in Christ will rise first. And then Whoever is still here on earth at that time, who is in Christ Jesus, will also rise with them. And together, the ones who are dead and the ones who are still alive, who are righteous, who are born again, everybody will be caught up with Jesus in the air. Say, I will be one of them. He's coming again. And those who love him will be glad. If you love Jesus, when he comes again, you will be glad. Because you know you are going home. Revelation 22 verse 12 says, I am coming quickly. So don't let anybody deceive you that you can do what you like. You know, he's, he's not coming now. How do you know? It reminds me many years ago, about six, seven years ago, somebody knocked on my door. So I knew who they were. Um, I knew what, what they were there for. So usually I wouldn't open. But that day I opened. And then they began to tell me about the kingdom. So I let her say everything she had to say. So when she finished, I said, if you die, do you know where you are going? She said, no, but my good works. So she started preaching to me again. I let her finish. I said, if you die, you don't know where you are going. I said, but if I die, I know where I'm going. I said, how can I, who know where I'm going? Now listen to you or come to your faith that you that you don't know where you are going if you die. She had no answer for me. So I now told her about Jesus. That for me, when I die, I'm going to heaven. You, you are still not sure because when you die, your work is still going to be balanced. 
And it's until then that you will know where you are going. I said, there's no way that I can follow you. You are the one who is supposed to come with me because I know the way, the truth, and the life. He said, I'm coming quickly. My reward is with me to give to each as is his work. So I want us to know that we do have a reward. Amen? Amen. Whether for good or for bad. Depending on what you do, there's a reward waiting for every one of us. And so it is critical for us at this time to begin to lay up our treasures in heaven. Amen? Amen. Where things don't break in, where moth does not destroy, where termites can't eat our work, treasures in heaven. And the only kind of treasure that you can lay up in heaven is the souls that you win to Christ. If the way you live, if you are telling people about Jesus and they are giving their lives, you have treasures being laid up in heaven. If you are living a life that people are seeing you, and because of you, they are now, because, they are now asking, what should I do to become a Christian like you? Treasures in heaven. But if you are using, living a, a, a life that people, and you call yourself a Christian, then there's also a reward. It will not be treasures in heaven. It will be punishment in hell. How many of us want punishment in hell? How many of us want treasures in heaven? Let's rise up on our feet. Let's talk to the Lord this morning. Let's let, tell him, Lord, I know you are coming again. I know. I want to be ready for your coming. I don't want to be left here. I want to be rewarded when you come. Go ahead and talk to the Lord. Jesus, he's coming again. Lord Jesus, when you come again, I want to be ready. I don't want to be left behind. Touch my life. And if you have never given your life to Jesus and you are here, you want to surrender your life now? You want to give your life to Jesus? Because it is only those who have given their life to Jesus who are going to heaven. I want to pray for you. Just wave your hand wherever you are. You are saying, I Jesus, I want you to come into my heart. I don't want to go to hell. I want to surrender my life to you. And you may also be here maybe at one time or the other in your life you had surrendered to the Lord. But you have gone back and you have done some things that, and you know, you know you are not right with God. He's here and he wants to forgive. You remember I said we are work in progress. He did not come to condemn anybody. He came to save. So if you are here and you are saying, Lord, forgive me because I know I have done some things that are wrong. And I want forgiveness. And I want you to restore me. Also, wave your hand to me. Let me pray for you. He's right here. He wants to save your soul. He wants to make sure that you make it to heaven. Anybody here? You are saying, forgive me because I missed it. Forgive me because I've done wrong. All right then. So we are all good. We are all living a life that pleases God. All right. So now we are going to pray. We are going to say, Lord, bless me. Bless me. Bless me, Lord. Be with me. Help me to live a life that will please you. Because when you live a life that will please you, God, you are not only going to be rewarded in heaven. He says right here on earth, he says he will come through for you. So tell the Lord, Lord, bless me. Whatever it is that you need his blessing for right now, talk to him about it. Lord, visit me. Visit me, Lord. Bless me. I'm trusting you. I'm believing in you. My hope is in you. Lord, keep me. Protect me. Provide for me. Heal me. Help me. Encourage me, O oh Lord. Give me strength. Lord, I don't feel too good right now. Put your joy in my heart. Help me, Lord. Take away the anxiety for that person who is anxious. Lord, take away this anxiety. Give me your peace. That person who is saying, I don't even know what my tomorrow will be like. Lord, take away that anxiety. Take away my fear. Touch me. Heal me. 
So that person who is in trouble, you don't know how you are going to get out of it. Lord, deliver me. Deliver me, Lord, I'm in trouble. Deliver me. Deliver me. Deliver me, oh God. Karebo shatalabahi. Thank you, my father. That person who is worrying about their child or their grandchild. Talk to the Lord about it now. Lord, visit my child. Where my child is? That my grandchild. Touch them, Lord. You are concerned about a relation. I don't know who, whether it's a child, a grandchild, a sibling. I don't know who it is. But you are concerned. Talk to the Lord about it now. Lord, Rabba Shatalabahi. Whatever that person is going through, talk to God about it now. Lord, I need a miracle. I need you to, I need your presence where that child is, where that grandchild is, where that sibling is, where that relation is. I need you to appear to them. Robo Lenta poko sokotaka for that person who is concerned, you don't know what is going on with your body. And you are afraid. Ah, Lord Jesus, touch me. Ask God to touch you now. Lord, touch me now. Touch. You are the healer. You are the healer. Touch me now. I cannot continue to live in fear. You created this body. Whatever is going on in it, Lord, fix it yourself. Fix it yourself. Heal me, Lord. Marobo Lord, we bless you. Thank you, my Father. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Father, we are so grateful. We thank you, O oh God. Thank you because you're here. Thank you for your power that is working right now. Thank you for this, the problems you are solving. The bodies you are healing. The relations you are touching wherever they are. Lord, thank you for, for fear that you are removing. For peace that you have given. Thank you, Lord. For provision, oh God. For that person who says, how am I going to make ends meet? Father, thank you. Thank you because you love us. We trust you, oh God. For every situation we have talked to you about today, we trust you, Lord. And we know you are coming through. We know you are working on it already. We know, Lord God, that you are providing a solution. We know, Lord God, that our testimony is already on the way. And Father, we say thank you. We well, bless your holy name. Thank you, precious Father. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Let somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah.